I suppose the elephant in the room here is... Note that I'm going to be spoiling the ending of the short story also, so if you haven't read it... Yeah. Yeah, the elephant in the room... At least I would imagine it is, is the changed ending. That is really the biggest change I have heard of. As far as I understand, in the short story, it is Stephen and not Joshua. It's a lead, not a supporting character, who has the fear of losing his hearing, and who then turns insane and kills someone with an axe as a response. But this is a minor change. The same thing does happen in the film, and we still do have Stephen coming at Quaid with an axe. Anyway, the ending. As I understand, in the novel, in the short story, the appearance of Quaid's attacker was... He was wearing a clown suit, or clown makeup, or something like that. And when Steven attacks him, he has gone insane, so he has a warped grin on his face, and resembles this clown. So he is killed by his greatest fear. They actually do kind of reference it in this because Quaid says at one point he, he lists some fears that he thinks are inferior and they're like spiders and clowns are two of them so I think that might be the writer saying I'm sorry guys but we thought the clown thing was a tad silly in the film here it is instead just a dark figure. And Quaid survives. It is Steven who dies in the end. I've been pondering if it is entirely realistic that a Quaid after really facing his fears because two people come at him with an axe and the latter you know, from behind does somewhat maybe look like, you know, he has the dirtied hair, I guess. So it is like he is killing the attacker, the one who killed his parents. And I don't know, one could theorize that something like that might be such a strong catharsis that he would no longer really need the whole dread study. He would no longer be interested, maybe. But instead, we see him now force Cheryl to cut and eat Stephen, a friend of hers. I... I guess the key is in the narration there near the end, with him kind of realizing that maybe there would be some preparation of his own demise in witnessing the last fears of others. And we get the close-up with the pupils dilating, or is that the other... Anyway, you know, as Stephen dies. So I guess that is why he keeps going. Also, for those wondering, I myself thought that maybe she should be able to get loose, and you know, why doesn't she stand up and rush at Quaid? It's not that obvious, but I believe her wrist is secured to the pipe that she has seen sort of clinging to 
when we first see her down there in the basement. So, she wouldn't be able to. I'm not entirely sure why Joshua took so long. Here on this second viewing, it has been some months since I watched it the first time, I thought that maybe Joshua would literally just follow right behind Stephen, because he saw Stephen, and then Stephen grabs the axe and heads out, and yet he only shows up a while later. Joshua does. Because by then, Stephen has had time to sit there and watch the film. You know, Quaid had time to tie him up. That whole thing. I'm not entirely sure. That might be... Well, if nothing else, one of the few clichés in the movie. The meat thing is unarguably disgusting, and there is a lot of focus on it. You can't entirely watch that scene, at least not if you're into the movie, and not feel uncomfortable. But it does make the point that if pushed far enough, we can do something that we would most other times never even consider. You know, in her case, it was just eating meat. And I would have to agree with Stephen that that scene cements Quaid as a sadist. But, you know, a plane crashes in the Andes, eventually people are going to be eating their former companions. If it is life or death, we can do things, or if we at least come, if we consider it to be life and death, we can do things that we would normally never imagine that we could maybe do. I also think that one of the most horrifying things in this is Abby trying to fix herself with the, um, I don't know what it's called in English, but, you know, the, the metal thing that she uses on her skin. that. That would have to be the most horrifying part of the movie, in my opinion. Although I would say that Joshua having his ears shot off is also quite terrifying. I suppose one could discuss if maybe Steven overall does trust Quaid a little bit too much, he keeps forgiving him for things. I'm not sure I would have gotten in the car with Quaid. I think that is what I have to say about the movie, so those were my thoughts on Dread. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.